You've just spent the weekend color matching your new smart bulbs to match your throw pillows and are basking in the perfect glow. Fast forward two weeks, half the bulbs show offline, your Netflix keeps buffering, and your spouse is shouting because the hallway lights won't turn on. Sound familiar? Here's the brutal truth. Those pretty smart bulbs? They're likely choking out your Wi-Fi like rush hour traffic on a one-lane bridge. See, the most important aspect of lighting isn't lumens or hue, it's about the invisible language that they all speak. If you're like most homeowners, terms like Zigbee, Thread, Z-Wave, or even Wi-Fi make your eyes glaze over. You've probably heard YouTubers throw those terms around and thought, yeah, this video is not for me, but don't zone out just yet. Here's what most people miss. Lighting is usually the biggest category of devices in your smart home. So your smart bulbs are likely the first place in your network to feel the strain. So today I'm breaking down these protocols, Zigbee, Thread, Wi-Fi, and even Matter in plain English. And by the end, you'll know what these labels mean and what place they should have in your smart home. Hey, I'm Robert, and Oconee Smart Homes exists to make real homes more convenient, accessible, and safe with smart home technology. We serve real customers right here in Oconee County, Georgia, but this channel is for anyone who wants to make a simpler, smarter home. Let's zoom out for a second. Every smart device in your home communicates using what's called the OSI model. Don't worry, we're not diving into textbooks here. Just think of your smart home traffic like city streets. The physical groundwork, radio waves, cables, and chips, that's the pavement of your roads, the physical layer. The protocols are the type of road, Wi-Fi, Zigbee, Thread, that's your network layer. And the rules of the road, the universal traffic laws, that's matter, the new common language, the application layer. If the pavement is cracked or the roads are jammed, even your sleekest smart bulb won't get far. The solid network is foundational for all wireless communication, but your chosen smart home protocols also determine how smoothly your devices operate. So let's talk about the highways and roads your devices actually travel on, the network protocols. First, let's dive a little deeper into the protocol that everyone knows best, Wi-Fi. Think of Wi-Fi as your city's main freeway. It's fast, direct, and open to everyone. You don't need a separate hub because your router is already directing traffic. It'll haul 4K video streams or a chunky firmware update without breaking a sweat because it's built for high bandwidth, those heavy data loads. Modern Wi-Fi 6 can push well over a gigabit per second. That's great for blasting high definition 2K video from your video doorbell to your phone or streaming multiple 4K movies. There's no denying it's raw data power, but add in dozens or even hundreds of little devices all chattering away with temperature updates or color changes and suddenly everything slows down and stops. Then there's the power draw. A standard Wi-Fi light bulb will draw an extra two watts of power a month just staying online waiting for commands. So your energy saving LED may be costing you more than you think. So what's the bottom line here? Wi-Fi is absolutely great for your data hogs, your computers, your streaming devices, your high definition cameras, but throw in a dozen chatty smart bulbs and everything gets stuck like a rush hour gridlock. That's why I avoid Wi-Fi for lighting. Then there's Zigbee. Zigbee power systems like Philips Hue, Ikea, and Akara hubs. Think of it as a toll road completely separate from the city highways. It builds its own road network, each bulb rebroadcasting signals and strengthening the network as devices are added. Zigbee operates similarly to Wi-Fi on a 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, but is designed carefully to not interfere with your Wi-Fi. Actually, it's more like a flying car. Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. The result is stable, low-powered performance. But there's a catch. You're not taking off in this ride without a hub to translate its encrypted language. The hub is the traffic controller and Zigbee won't run without one. Now imagine a brand new purpose-built neighborhood bypass. That's Thread. It's an IP-based mesh network designed specifically for low power, low latency smart home devices. But here's the big advantage. Thread creates a self-healing mesh. Every new device doesn't clog the road, it actually builds new roads. Unlike Wi-Fi, Thread actually gets faster and stronger as you add new devices. You will need a Thread border router for this to work, but chances are you already have one as the technology now comes built into Apple TVs, HomePod minis, Amazon Echoes, and certain Eero routers. Thread is low power, low latency, and extremely reliable. That's why it's quickly becoming the standard for smart homes. So now you might be wondering, what are the practical differences between Zigbee and Thread? They look similar. Both use a low power mesh network that strengthens as you add devices, but here's the key difference. Zigbee speaks its own private language. That's why you need a bridge or a hub to translate its language into your smart home. And it works great, but then you're tied to whatever brand makes that hub. Thread is more open and speaks the same internet language as your other devices, IPv6. So here's the cheat sheet. Zigbee is proven, but is closed off. Thread is newer, open, and works directly with Matter. 
Speaking of matter, now let's talk about the cars themselves and the rules of the road. That's where matter comes in. Matter isn't the road. It's the car delivering the package and the rules they follow. Again, matter is not a new network protocol. Think of it as a universal language or set of traffic laws that smart devices can follow regardless of the road they're driving on. Matter rides on top of Thread, Wi-Fi, or ZigBee via a bridge, giving each smart bulb a passport to communicate into your ecosystem. Before Matter, if a manufacturer wanted to support Apple, Alexa, and Google, they'd have to build three separate cars. But now they can build once and drive anywhere. In plain English, if you see the Matter logo, you can buy with confidence, and it'll just work in whatever ecosystem you use. And if you're finding this breakdown helpful, please do us a huge favor and hit that like button. And the comments are open. Tell us about your worst smart home traffic jam. Was it a camera that wouldn't connect or a smart light that wouldn't turn off? Give us your tragic story and I'll pin the most epic one. So who actually wins? Based on real world use and the underlying technology, I'm gonna to try to give the clearest roadmap that I can offer. If you want the fastest, most resilient and future-proof highway for your small, chatty smart home devices, Thread absolutely takes the flag on this one. It's simply superior for these types of devices. If you already own a fleet of Zigbee bulbs and sensors, don't rush out to replace them. It's not worth the cost of an immediate upgrade. Zigbee is still a smart home powerhouse. As a rule of thumb, I say stay away from Wi-Fi for smart bulbs, stick with Thread if you can, Zigbee if you already have it. Ultimately, most homes are gonna have to settle on a hybrid approach. High bandwidth devices on Wi-Fi and the vast array of your smaller smart home devices on Thread or Zigbee. The real magic happens when all of these devices and all of these protocols stitch together seamlessly, working across ecosystems like Apple, Alexa, and Google, truly unifying your smart home experience. Quick note before we wrap, Matter is always evolving. In the latest update, Matter 1.4.2 released in August of 2025, there were some significant updates for Wi-Fi. It brings easier Wi-Fi onboarding, less background chatter, and support for a larger number of devices. So while I still don't prefer Wi-Fi as the primary protocol, it is getting more lightweight, and more reliable in a matter world. In conclusion, build the foundation first. Smart lighting isn't just about aesthetics or decor, it's foundational infrastructure for your smart home. Build the roads right, and your colors will pop, your scenes will run on time, and the only argument we'll have is which colors are best for your movie night scene. Ready to ditch the frustration and truly enjoy your smart home? Pick the protocols first, and then the bulbs. Your future self and your bandwidth will thank you. Now go ahead and drop a comment with your most annoying smart home fail, I'll read every single one. I hope this protocol breakdown was helpful for you. If you want to see a side-by-side -side comparison of some popular smart bulbs, go ahead and click here to watch part three of this series. And be sure to stick around for part five where I'm going to be breaking my own rules and installing some Wi-Fi smart bulbs. This is where technical theory meets real world design. Subscribe and stick around because you're not going to want to miss it. God bless you. We'll see you next time.